everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. Praise the Lord. Joshua, chapter number 24. We're going to start with verse number 13. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, and vineyards and olive yards which you planted not do you eat. Now therefore, fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Me and my house. Amen. Me and my house will serve the Lord. Brother, I think the character Joshua in the Bible gets overlooked. I think he is one of the strongest men in the history of mankind. Now, Joshua did it the way that probably the majority of people do it. First of all, let's look at him. He, he's born into slavery. He's a slave. Moses comes along and he sees some hope in a man that knew God. And he decides he's going to tag along with the man that knew God. That's pretty smart. That's pretty smart. Pick your friends well. Pick the people that you work with well. Especially pick people that you are going to mentor you. Pick them well. And if there is one qualification that you should put above everything else, is the person, people that you are hanging out with the most. Do they love God? Mm -hmm. I want you to ask yourself that question. The people that you hang out throughout the week until you get with your Sunday crowd, the people that you are around, the people that influence you, do they know God? Uh, my boy here, he's getting ready to play football for the high school. He's an eighth grader. He's getting ready to play football. And um, someone said, well, why are you letting him play football? Because football teaches him discipline. He may not go into military. He may go into military, but somebody's got to teach, teach him some discipline. Amen. Sports teach discipline, and out of all the sports, football teaches more discipline than any of them. Amen. I coached it. I played it. I know. Amen. Uh, sometimes you need to be hollered at. Sometimes you need a foot. You need a foot put. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Amen. And sometimes, for whatever reason, amen, we don't get that discipline at home. And that's why I'm choosing for him to play football. I want him to play football. It teaches things. I have told you, God has put me where I'm at. 
But there were two instrumental things that made me where I am as a preacher. The youth camps I went to and the football that I played. I remember later on when I was in my mid-20s and life got hard. I'm raising them babies and ain't got enough money to put milk on the table, not enough money to buy diapers and everything else. And I'm working two to three jobs a day. Amen. And I remember one particular night I was lumping a truck. Anybody know what lumping a truck is? I mean, that's where they go get somebody to unload the truck. The trucker sits in the cab, and he pays somebody to go unload the truck. And it was about 100 and some degrees outside, made it about 150 degrees in that truck. And I done work two jobs that day. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm feeling like, well, I did. I think I did vomit. And I'm feeling just like quitting. And I said, I made it through them two-a-days. I can make it through this. And by God's grace, I'm standing here today. Discipline, but I told I, I said all that to say this. Uh, he's also going to hear stuff from them coaches and stuff that is detrimental. He already has the way they talk. I think it's a shame. Amen. I don't think you need to curse. In fact, my next little writing on Facebook may be talking about that. Do you all know how ignorant you all sound when you curse? How you crucify the King's English? They call it. Most cursing has nothing to do with the conversation that you're having. If you knew how, did you know this, that if somebody was interpreting you when you were cursing, they'd have to stop completely because you absolutely make no sense. And he's going to hear some of that, and he's going to be around some kids and stuff, and I know you got to weigh it. Amen. But you can't throw away the baby for the bath. Amen. You're going to be around this the rest of your life. And I said all that to say this, and this is, none of this is in my notes. This is all free of charge. Amen. You need to pick wisely. That's why when you come to church and you come to youth camps and you come to uh, Soul Squad and you come to your Sunday school classes, that's why you teachers, that's why all of us need to have the fire so we can pour into them what the world's been sucking out of them. Amen. And Joshua found himself somebody really good to pour into him. Amen. And he, went, he was beside Moses' side all them years. He was faithful. Moses is up on the top of the mountain. Joshua's camped down at the bottom. Moses goes into the tent to pray. Joshua stays a little bit longer. Amen. Then came his time. God takes Moses home. Amen. And all you young people, it'll come your time sooner or later. And God takes Joshua uh, and puts him in a position. And Joshua automatically, just like everybody else, that wonders whether he can do the job. He can do the job because whether he knew it or not, he was being trained for the job. I mean, I know this world's a mess, but God's training some Joshuas. I like to say, I always talk about the Jehus, that God's raising up a generation of Jehus. Amen. But He's also raising up some Joshuas. And God's going to use Joshua to bring us into the Canaan land. And God's going to use Joshua to do things. I looked there the other night in just our little area. There was a good crowd, somewhere probably between 70 and, I don't know, between 70 and 100 maybe there. And it was a good crowd, different churches, and I, and I was I was encouraged because the devil ain't got them all. And I said, the devil ain't got them all, and God's raising up some Joshuas and some Jehus. And, and, and Joshua starts to tear down the walls of Jericho. And then Joshua has his stumbles. He trips and he stumbles over this little place called Ai. And he, and he has his good days and he has his bad days and his good days far outweigh his bad days. And now he's starting to look back. We don't know how long it is before the, he makes his speech and he dies. But we know that this is kind of like his, you know, his going away speech. And Joshua looks over the landscape and he could see some things. He knew that all the gods hadn't got tore down. He knew that uh, there was a lot of pitfalls and, and traps. And he says this, and I want to pick it up in verse number 19. I wish Joshua could address the Republican National Convention. 
I wish Joshua could address the Democrat National Convention. Shucks, I wish Joshua could just address us this morning. Amen. And this is what Joshua says to his people, knowing, amen, that he's getting ready to leave, that there's going to be a transfer. And he says this. We're going to pick it up in 13. I've given you a land you did not labor and cities which you did not build, vineyards and olive yards that you didn't plant. Man, are we blessed. I said, we are blessed. I said, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. You don't know how blessed we are. Everything we got. Amen. If I went in and started talking about the luxuries and the blessings we got, shucks, I got a bid. I woke up uh, uh, yesterday morning. I didn't really want to get out of bed. I just wanted to wake up. Now, Jimmy Swigert was on, studying the Word was on. And I thought, I just want to watch it. I just took a button and went, bleh. Man, that's ridiculous. Amen. Are we so blessed? Amen. I got a refrigerator, got air conditioning. I, I, I mean, Whoever is the worst off in this bunch is blessed beyond compare to about 90% of the rest of the world. Did you hear what I said? My number one complainer in this group this morning, you are blessed more than the majority of the world. Did you know that the majority of the world does not own a car? And shucks, if you're like most of you all I'm looking out there are two car people, some of you are three car people. Shucks, some of you got so many play toys to ride around on on the water, outside the water, whatever. Just bless, 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 bless. America is still the most blessed country on the earth. Amen. If we party, there's no song that says party like what, what, party like 1989? Party like 19 something? 99. Yeah, party like 1990. Man, all we do is party. I told everybody I love you, and I'm just going to tell you the truth. Amen. Um, when I was growing up, people didn't miss church like they do today. The reason we miss church because we go play. I mean, we just play. We play. As much as we work. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I know. I, I just described what I went through when I was young. I told, I told Andrew, I tell Eden and Juddy, you know, they, they struggle. They, they struggle. Them young, them young couples, they struggle. And you know what I tell them? And I help them out when I can. But you know what I tell them? I think that's part of life. I think it's part of life. Amen. We look around at everybody else and say, they're not struggling. Oh, you might be surprised. Amen. We struggle. But all, for the most part, America, we got, we've got land we didn't fight for. My generation, the last major war when I was born was Vietnam. Now, I know we've had 911 and we've had an Afghanistan. But for the most part, my entire generation doesn't know. We don't come close. Now, my dad's generation, they, they knew. When they were babies, they knew. Amen. And the, the, my grandparents' generations, they completely knew, amen, because Hitler was trying to take every piece of land that there was. Amen. And even though America had been established, amen, there, there was a threat from the ISIS and the, and the Axis to come and, and to take everything from us. But us, the group that I'm looking at right here, we ain't done much. We ain't paid much price for our land. Amen. We haven't paid much price for our cities. And you know, all our cities were already built. And they've been shining for a long time because the generations that went before us, they, they plowed the plow. They, 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 now, I know I can almost feel the feedback, but I'm telling you if you look at it, we've got a land that we didn't work for. 
We got cities that we, well, how did we get them? We inherited it. We were lucky to be born here. Have you ever wondered what it would have been like to be born someplace else? I don't know how I happened to be born in the Shenandoah Valley, Back Creek Valley, right here in the most beautiful spot on the entire planet. Amen. I hit the lottery. Amen. To be born to Tom and Hilda Joy Snyder, I hit the lottery. Amen. But you know, I didn't have no choice in that. I I didn't pick it. I didn't work for it. It was just grace. Amen. To be born right here on this piece of land. But I didn't fight for it. I didn't build it. Amen. I just I just inherited it. And he said, You got you got olive yards and you got what else did he say? You got vineyards. What he meant is you got all kind of income coming in. I say this and I say this honestly. In Uganda, them kids come up to me in lines. Young people come up to me in lines every time I have a crusade. They'll come up two, three hundred at a time, and their number one prayer is, pray for my studies that I can get a good job. Pray for my studies. Pray that I get a good job. And I don't know how many of them have maxed out on their studies, and there's still no jobs. We just celebrated with Brandon. He's worked hard to, to get where that is. He had to go down the road all them years and everything like that, but he was in a place that he could do it. I know, I know some young people that in Uganda, they work and work and work and go through all the schooling that they possibly can go through and get everything they possibly can. And you know what they end up doing? Sitting on the side of the road begging. Amen. We are blessed. Beyond comprehension, we are blessed. My goodness. We've inherited this. We've got a, we've got a land we didn't work for. And the truth of the matter is, we don't know how to work. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be flat dog honest with you. Everybody comes up to me. A lot of people come up to me. They come up, Brother Chuck, and say, man, you're hardworking pastors. You're hardworking preachers. And we do. We, uh, we work somewhat hard. I'm almost, I can't even come close to Dad and Oscar. You know, they could slow down. But they don't. Someone said, why don't they? Because they know how to work. Amen. I love you. Amen. But we we much, this generation, we much rather lay around than work around. We don't. Now, there's a few exceptions. And if, if your feelings are hurt, good. Amen, because overall, we don't know how to work. I, I, I don't know near how to work as hard as my dad and my uncle. But then again, they don't know how to work as hard as their dad and their uncles. Because my, my, my grandpa, both of my grandpaps, they're hard-working men. Amen. There, there was no question. What, what you going to do? CJ's biggest question to me. It's, it'll be before the end of the day. What are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do? My grandfather's generation, there wasn't no question. What are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do tomorrow? We're going to get up. We're going to go to work. We're going to milk. We're going to milk the cows. We're going to split the wood. Amen. We're going to bring the hay in. Amen. Y'all ain't listening to me. Amen. We don't know how to work. And the generation that was before them, they had to work. You don't think they just pushed a button and out come that latte. What do you think, what do you think my grandpa would say about a latte? What in the world? You spent what on what? Amen. You know what that you know how they made their coffee? They went, if they could afford to get it, they went to, the, went to the little store and they bought some coffee beans, amen, and they brought it in and they did their whole process of drying it out and then they got a coffee grinder. Not one that you went beat, 
They got a coffee grinder that they put those uh, beads in there, and then they turned it around and cranked it around. And then they, then they worked on how to cook it. And it. We don't know how to work. And not only do we not know how to work, it, the ones of us that do work, all we do is sit around and look for shortcuts. I, I, I don't know. I did too. I'm like, Dad, why are you doing it this way? I, CJ the other day, he was with me. We were just up here. And he says, well, we'll drive down to the building. And I said, I can carry it down. And now, I, that's kind of unusual for me. But I said, we can just carry it. We're always looking for a shortcut. I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens out of this. The best work is the work that you can be proud of. Amen. And sometimes the best work is not shortcuts. Amen. Uh, I, I got to get moving on. We don't know how to fight. I said this. It was before national coverage when President Trump got shot. That's pitiful. I, I, I appreciate, the, I appreciate the, uh, the Secret Service. I appreciate all law enforcement. But what i seen on national television they, somebody dropped the ball. They were not trained. Amen. They're supposed to be the best of the best in the world. They're guarding the most important man in the world. And I'm not throwing stones, but President Clinton's about 6'2", and you can't have no five-foot person guarding a 6'2 person. I, I'm, I'm just country smart and no better than that. It's pitiful. And I said this. And I mean this, and affectionately. I have been out of the loop for a long time, but I've been watching Christian, and now I'm watching Kelly, and I'm watching the service just a little bit more. And I say this, I want you to know I'm proud of the military. But if you think that the military is as strong today as it was years ago, you're wrong. Amen, because we just got a failing grade by supposedly the highest star in our military. It failed. She, the leader, said she failed. Now, I don't want anybody to get mad at me. We don't know how to fight. We haven't had to fight. We don't know how to fight. Take breaks. Take as many breaks as you want. Oh, they need a break. They need a break. They need a break. We got we to gotta do it gentle. Now, like I said, CJ can we go through football practice. I guarantee you he ain't going to go through Bear Bryant's football practice. Y'all, a lot of you don't even know who Bear Bryant was. Before he became one of the most famous coaches in all of football, I mean, they tried to get rid of him because they said he's killing people. That's how hard he pushed his people. We don't know how to fight. You all can't handle the truth. We can't handle the truth. We don't know how to fight. I love you. Amen. But our enemies this morning, this morning, have looked at what our so-called president and vice president has said and did to Israel. Amen. And they have recognized that we don't know how to fight. And you all can sit there. Americans say can sit there. You better be concerned. Because our enemies are recognizing. They saw CNN too. They saw NBC too. They recognize we don't know how to fight. Someone said, are you doing all this to scare me? No, we've inherited lands that we did not work for and we haven't fought for. Amen. And Joshua, Joshua then goes into verse number 15. He says, you have a choice to make. Amen. Aren't you glad you serve God? Amen. I love my country. I still think it's the greatest country in the world. Amen. But I love my God more. 
Amen. I am, a, I, I, am uh, I guess I'm a citizen of the United States of America is what my passport says, but you've only saw my one passport. My other passport says I'm a citizen of heaven. And I'm just so journeying through this. Actually, I'm on a visa down here. Amen. My, 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 uh, I'm just passing through this place. And Joshua was saying to you, and I'm, uh, uh, Joshua was saying to me, and I'm saying to you, you've got a choice to make. And this is what the choice you got. He says, choose you this day whom you'll serve. The gods, small g, or the God, big G. Gods, small g, the God, big G. Whom are you going to serve? Now, I would like to tell you, you've got plenty of time. I don't know if you've got 24 hours, to be honest. I really don't know. When I sat in the pew and the preacher would preach like this, I'm like, well, I'll take my chances. Don't you dare. Don't you dare take your chances this morning. I tell the young people, I wish that they could be, I had plenty of chance. I, I did, Mike. I had lots of chances. And don't think them preachers didn't preach. Don't think Raymond Jones didn't preach. Don't think Hennis Fox didn't preach. Amen. Don't think them Strickland brothers didn't preach. The Pyrus brothers didn't preach. I mean, I sat under some preaching. Amen. Don't think James Richards didn't preach. Don't think my grandfather didn't smack me upside the head and say, boy, aren't you getting it? Amen. And I still fooled around. But you, I am really, really believe that this generation don't have that luxury that you've got plenty of time. I believe that any moment things can all change. And since COVID happened, listen, it was a trial. COVID was a trial test. And since it has happened, I can tell you, you can wake up tomorrow and not be able to buy no gas. You can wake up tomorrow and not be able to go to the grocery store. You can wake up tomorrow and the bank will have a note on your house. It can happen like that because it's already been foreshadowed and happened just four years ago. And we're worse four years later than what we were then. Because we have not heeded the warning. I know you want me to make you shout this morning. I know you want me to make you dance. Amen. You could have done that earlier. Amen. I'm here to give you the truth. Amen. You've got to make a choice. And you better choose wisely. Amen. You can't say, well, I'm going to hang out I'm going to hang out with the turkeys all day, and then I'm going to fly with the eagles in the, in the evening. Mm -mm. He said, choose. <sighs> choose. I've made my choice a long time ago. Now, I've made mistakes, but I've made my choice a long time ago. Amen. We sang that song a couple weeks ago. I preached a message similar to this a couple weeks ago. I have decided... To follow Jesus. I've already, I'm in. I ain't saying I haven't failed. I ain't saying I haven't made mistakes. But I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. I have decided. Amen. I'm not taking the shortcut. I'm not taking the back roads. Amen. It's got to be Jesus' way. Amen. I'm a member of the kingdom of God. I have already made my choice. I thank God that the night of graduation in 1984 that I made a choice that from that moment on I was going to serve Jesus. Amen. I made a choice. I, I made a commitment to, in there have been many times since that time that I have recommitted and reconsecrated. Amen. But let it be known, amen, that I serve Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. I have decided. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 2. You got that in there? Amen. 
For he saith, and I have heard in a time accepted, and in the day and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I know you would like to keep partying. I know you would like to keep reclining. I know you would like to take it easy. But I'm here to tell you I want to ring the bell. (laughs) Hey, that's why we keep it up here. I want to ring the bell. I want to get your attention. You better wake up. You better choose. Brother Tom, I don't like preaching like this. That's all right. Blood's getting off my hands. You won't be able to say you didn't have the opportunity. Amen. I know I'm talking to good people. I know I'm probably even talking to saved people. Amen. But we're still got, we got one foot in the world and one foot in church. And we're going to think that we're going to walk like this. You can't walk like this. You better walk the straight and narrow. You better walk with your head up. Amen. You got to make a choice. Brandon Stevens preached the other night. I thought Brandon did a good job. He said one thing that really impressed me. He said he started preaching when he was 16 years old. He said, if you want to become a social outcast, start preaching when you're 16 years old. He said, but you know what? I found out that didn't bother me. Amen. He said, I found people that love the Lord like me. He said, now a lot of them were older, and I hung out with older people, but he made the right choice. He made the right choice. Amen. It may not be a popular choice. It may not be the hip choice. It may not be the happening choice. Amen. But it'll be the right choice. When you choose God every time, no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome, choosing God is always the right choice. Today, you got to make a choice. Yesterday, I saw it. About 9 o'clock in the morning, I didn't watch the Olympics. I'm an Olympics guy. Not all the events, but I like to watch the Olympics. Amen. I'm a sports guy. Amen. And I'm competitive. I love to see, amen, uh, what they do. But what I saw yesterday morning cannot be overlooked. And I made a little statement. Someone said it was a long statement. That actually really wasn't for me. Amen. But I just made a little statement, and I I tried to pick my words. And it's been one of the most popular posts I have ever written. And people can adhere to it. They took one of the most sacred things that church, that Christians think, and our Holy Communion, the Last Supper, and they made a debauchery of it. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to look you right in the eye. And I'm a, I take that personal. Amen. I take that personal. Okay? I, I'm sorry. One person said, are them fighting words? They are to me. Amen. They are to me. Amen. The Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. Someone said, well, what would Jesus do? Well, I know one thing that he would do. I know he would love them, amen, but I know one thing, he wouldn't just avoid it. So I wrote this post, and I mean all kinds of people have jumped on with me. Because pe- people are like me. Just out of curiosity, how many agree with me? It's, it's, it's unacceptable. It is totally unacceptable. I am sorry, I am offended. I am offended lest his death be in vain. I am offended. Amen. And they act like Christians should. They went too far. Maybe we didn't say nothing about the abortion. Maybe we've allowed uh, the, the, the homosexual community and, 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 and all this stuff go on. Amen. But I'm drawing the line. When they make a mockery of the Last Supper. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If you've got a compliant spirit, amen, if you think you just avoid this, amen. And so one of my friends, an educated friend, he got on there, and I didn't hold back. 
Amen. At first, he didn't understand what was going on, so he made public. He always gets on there because he's a liberal and I'm a conservative. And every time I make a conservative thing, he makes a liberal. And that's fine. This is America. You can do that. But I didn't just lay down yesterday and say, you got your opinion. I said, I'm sorry. I am deeply offended by this. And saying nothing to me, if I say nothing about things like this, then I am just as bad as the people that did it. Will this be popular? No, there will be some people that will. What gets me is how they think. Amen, that the whole world wants this. Because there's a group of people in here, and there's groups of people all around that I know, amen, we, we are highly upset. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to say something right now. What it took me to get riled up like that, shouldn't I have been riled up earlier when somebody was using my Lord and Savior's name in vain right in my presence? Oh my. Amen. I'm going to tell you something right now. You all got to go to work, and I know you got to keep peace. Amen. But I'll guarantee you, you got some degenerates in there that you work with. If you don't, one day you will. Amen. Don't let them come up there and use the Lord's name in vain right in your presence. I'm going to tell you something. I have been this way my whole life. When they start saying, Jesus Christ this and Jesus Christ that, amen, I'm going to tell them about that. Are you talking about my Lord and Savior? You're talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Are you crying out to him? And most of them, them are not educated enough because we, the church, have not educated them. I'm going to choose. Amen. Someone said, Brother Tom, you're getting awful heated. They're liable to come against you. Amen. They're liable to do this. And I've chose. I have chose. He said this. He said, now you all need to make a choice. And that's what I'm telling you. Every man, you've got to make your own choice. You've got to make your own choice. Brother Scott, good to see you. Amen. I guarantee you on that coke truck, he's still praising Jesus this morning. Amen. You've got to make your own choice. Well, I'll lose my job. I would rather lose my job than lose my soul. Well, the bank may not loan me the money. Well, okay, I'd rather for me to find some other way for God to bless me if the bank can't get it for me. At the end, I've made my choice. you got to make yours. you got to make yours. You got, now, listen, I'm not saying you understand it all, but I choose Jesus. Amen. This is what he said. But as for me... In my house. I actually thought I was going to spend more time on them. On you. But at the end of the day, it's about me. My relationship with God. I've got to make heaven my home. I want you to come with me. That's why I preach. That's why we go overseas. That's why we have tent meetings. Listen. Next month is going to be extremely busy. We're starting back school and all that. Why in the world did I pick it? Well, I didn't pick it. It just seemed to kind of fall on my lap. But why am I doing all that? It's because I want to see one more save, soul saved. Right, Katie? Amen. I want to see what well, Bless her heart. She has been a, like a breath of fresh Got two Katie set right beside each other. Amen. God, just a breath of fresh air here on Wednesday night. Just amen. And that's why I do what I do. But at the end of the day, if I preach to everybody else and I myself become a castaway, I have got to stand, and I make a stand as for me. Patrick Henry, over 200 and some years ago, stood up, and I've been in the house where he did it, and said, I choose liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. He said, I choose liberty. Amen. Amen. All his friends with him, different ones, they said, we choose freedom. That's American freedom. I choose spiritual freedom today. Amen. I am sorry. When they have a bunch of trans, trans, 
vestites, dressing up, portraying the Lord's Supper. Well, you may hurt somebody's feeling. Don't you know that so-and-so's got one in their family? Don't you know that in your church, you got so-and-so's and you got so-and-so? I understand that, and I love you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you even harder. If you don't come out of that lifestyle, you're going straight to hell. Amen. You're not going to come to this church and me not tell you, amen, that the lifestyle that you're living in, that a man sleeping with a man and a woman sleeping with a woman, amen, or if they're trying to dress like uh, all, you're going to hell. Amen. Why am I, I'm the only one that's really loving you. Everybody else is saying, y'all, you just choose your own way. That's your identity. Bless your heart. This is just the way you... No, I'm the only one that's really loving you. Jesus died for you. Now, your sin's no different than anybody else. It's no different than gossiping. Amen. It's no different than drinking. It's no different than anybody else. And I will tell all of them. I'll tell the gossiper and the drinker. Amen. And I will tell all the adulterers and everybody else. But we love you is why we're telling the truth. And I thank God that when I was a young man that preachers got up and preached and told us the truth. And so I have decided, as for me, I choose God. I choose God. I drive a school bus for Berkeley County Schools. You can turn this up so they can hear it. I watch the kids get on and off. I watch girls get through the parking lot holding girls' hands. I watch guys do it. I watch them, how they come and how they're dressed. In our public school where they're supposed to be a dress code. It's in the handbook. And I see it. But I just drive in, drop them off, and go back out. And thank God I'm blessed. Amen. I've only got a couple. Please, Lord, let it be the same this year. Amen. I've only got a couple that i got to do that for. I drive the smaller bus. But I watch them get off. I'm not in that school with them. Amen. I'm not there day by day with all the darkness and everything. But I want every young person that comes to this church to know, amen, that you can live above that. That you can walk down them halls. Amen. If you want to carry your Bible, you carry your Bible. Amen. If you want to put a Jesus t-shirt on, listen. They put all them wicked t-shirts on. If you want to put a Jesus t-shirt on, you put a Jesus t-shirt on. Amen. Do you know what? In my drawer, the, about the only t-shirts I got left are Jesus church t-shirts. I got the body for, to be a billboard. Amen. As for me and my house, but you've got to make a stand. Now, one of the worst things you can do is do that and then do the other two. No, make a stand. Make a stand. Don't, don't, you know, do both. Serve the Lord. Choose you. Now, I'm not saying you won't make mistakes. But no, I don't do that. I don't listen to that. I don't go here. I don't do that. The, the people come up to me. We go to restaurants. And they'll come up to me. It happens all the time. Rhonda's real good at it. The, the waiter will come up and they'll say, can we offer you a drink? She said, oh, no. No, what do you got? Can maybe a little, a little bit? No, she's uh uh-uh, uh, no, 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 no. She came out from it more than what I did. Amen. She is not very comfortable going someplace that she said, no, that's too much bar. I can't, I can't go there. Amen. Make a stand. Make a stand. I remember, and I'm hurrying. Because I ain't even got to, I ain't even got to my house part. I'm just getting to the me part. But when me was about 16 years old, I was sitting in, in biology class, and and the teacher was talking. And listen, I, I this is how I got through school. I'm not proud of it. This, this is true. I rode my football. And, okay, and, you know, I I was fairly smart. I didn't have to study that much. I could take a few tests and got through. I got through with C's and B's, and if I'd studied at all, I could have got through with straight A's, but I just kind of floated along. And I'm sitting in biology class with my head down on my desk like I normally did, snoozing the day away. 
And, and I heard the teacher say, a bunch of goo in the zoo made me and you. Not quite in that fashion, but she was talking that, you know, our ancestors all swung on vines. And before they swung on vines, they were jellyfish in the ocean. And I'll never forget this. I put my head up like this. I said, what? She said, Mr. Steiner, you got something to say? I said, what did you say? She said, well, this is, uh, I can't think of the word. What is it? Evolution. I said, well, it ain't right. Why ain't it right? Because Ada Ambrose and Louise Bowen taught me in the Bible, amen, that God created me. And she laughed at me. She laughed at me. And she said, well, Mr. Snyder, if you want to believe that, you can go ahead. That's your right. Before the rest of us. And then that torqued me. I said, wait a minute. What do you mean the rest of us? Well, the rest of us, we will choose to be educated. And I said, what about a class? Anybody else like me? And I saw hands go up like this, like this. I was 16 years old. Amen. I was a rotten to the core. Amen. But there was something inside of me that stood up that day and said, hey, amen, we're not going to sit there and believe this. Amen. If you let everybody else talk, I'm going to talk. Amen. And when she looked around, I'm going to tell you it was over three quarters. Of, amen. Probably even closer to 100% of the kids that was in my class say, uh-uh. Amen. We believe in Jesus too. We believe that God created us. Just because one kid stood up. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you can do that today wherever you go. As for me, I love what Brandon said. He said, I carried, he said, I was a preacher when I was 16 years old. Not only was he a preacher, he could play that music too. Amen. I remember Brandon preached his first message for us. Kayla preached her first message for us. Amen. I love to take care of young people. Amen. You can stand up where you're at. Well, I might, this happened to me. You got, as for me. So you do you. I'm going to do me. As for me, I'm choosing God. And as for my house, do I got time? Do you even want to hear this? Amen. Now, when I was a young man, Thomas E. and Hilda J., that was their house. Thomas D. wasn't bringing no tobacco into Hilda J.'s house even though he bought it with his own money, even though he was working a job. Amen. Let me get real with you. Oscar and Patricia probably was there that night. It was New Year's Eve. I was about 17 years old. I was in a backslidden condition. I'd went out. Mom and Dad went to bid the chickens. They were always asleep. I forgot it was New Year's Eve. And I come in the house, and there sat the deacon board. There sat the preacher, and I was drunk. Uh huh. That didn't go over well. Amen. I think I was grounded for about six months. Amen. I remember the speech the next day. There was some of this. Amen. I won't do it. But there was some of this. What are you thinking, boy? Walking in the house embarrassing me. I know y'all don't do nothing like that. I sat there and said, Stupid, stupid, stupid. Why did I do anything so stupid? She said, that'll never happen again. Guess what? It never happened again. I said, it never happened again. Amen. And I I, I walked in there and said, man, what am I doing? And the worst thing, I'll never forget this. The worst thing that I felt was when I looked into Ada Ambrose's eye and she went, You got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. But as for me and my house, now it's Tom and Rhonda's house. And as dysfunctional as it is, it's the house that God has put there. Listen, where's Hannah at? Okay, I ain't got no one else from the first group. If I caught you, you had a choice. That's why Eden. Got out of my house. That's why Andrew 
got out of my house. Someone said, you wasn't like that. No, you're not sinning in my house. As for me and my house. Now, I'm about to make some of you upset. Amen. But I put Eden on the road, and I put Andrew on the road. Amen. Now, they're welcome to come back anytime, but they ain't bringing their sin into my house. They're not bringing their drugs. They're not bringing their drink. They're not, look at me all you, well, you got to love them. I did love them. They knew my door was always open, but they wasn't bringing that into my house. And we had another rule, Sydney. Amen. You live in my house. What, Hannah? You, what, say it again. You go to church. 24, 25, 26 years old. Amen. You let, as for me in my house, and I can feel the blowback coming on me, but all of them are in church today, serving the Lord today, and it wasn't easy then. Well, you're being too hard on them. As for me and my house, and I realize I just made some of you upset. Look at me. I love you, and I don't care if you're upset. I'm glad you're upset because maybe now you'll start doing it the right way and not let your kids rule your house. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm getting ready to close. There was a person very close to me, and they had children. And every time the chil children got in trouble, they bailed them out. No, I never stuck my nose in. I never will stick my nose in. But she came to me. If you come to me and ask me, then I will tell you. And I said, now, this is what's going on. They, were, they, they actually they physically hit their parents. Okay? They cuss their parents. They, they just let them come. And I'm trying to make this ambiguous so that nobody knows what I'm talking about or who I'm talking about. And I said, if you don't get a hold of this, not only will they not make it into heaven, they will take you out. And you won't be going to heaven neither. And they're out. And one's already in eternity. As for me in my house, I'm not meddling. I'm saying my house. Y'all do whatever you want. Okay? You let them come in. You let them sleep around on your, on your couch. You let them sleep around in your beds. I mean, you let them bring your drugs in. You let your house be the party house. And you see how that turns out for you. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And I realize, well, listen, folks, I realize that we won't have one of them big mega churches preaching like this. But we doing all right. We sent $10,000 to missions last, last month. God will take care of us. If there's just two of us left, Brother Sidney, God will still take care of us. Because being right is not in numbers. Being right is in Him. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. It don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tithely. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.